Oshkosh Area Humane Society presents Happy Tales. Brought to you by the following local underwriters. Lakeside Animal Hospital, 235-5040. Provident Financial Consultants, LLC, 230-6898. West Business Services, 920-997-6927. Welcome to Happy Tales. I'm Cheryl Rosenthal. Communications Coordinator of the Oshkosh Area Humane Society. And I am Joni Geiger, the Executive Director. And today we have a very special uh, show for you. We have a special guest that Joni's going to be interviewing. We are going to be visiting with Eileen Ribbons, who is the Executive Director of the Wisconsin Puppy Mill Project. Right, and we thought this would be a very interesting show, and it's very timely, because this is really a hot button topic right now. Um, when I started in this business, oh, 18 years ago, as a humane society, we didn't really see a lot of impact that puppy mills were making on us. But I can tell you as of late, this has really, really been something that has been affecting us, not only these animals, obviously, but affecting this shelter and affecting this area. And we're going to talk about the reasons why, why these puppy mills are so popular right now in Wisconsin and what we can do to end the suffering. And I hope that uh, you'll also be talking about how can people identify what is a puppy mill uh, when you're looking for a sure. dog? Uh, what, what makes that stand out? What are right. the warning signs? And uh, what can we do to help these animals and to stop this uh, animal abuse and neglect? Absolutely. So let's get started. Well, Eileen, thanks uh, for being here today. We really appreciate it. And um, I'm curious at a personal level, how did you get started in this? How, why puppy mills? What, why is this such a passion for you? Back about 10 years ago, I was interested in Dalmatians. I had a Dalmatian, and someone told me about a Dalmatian in a pet sh shop in Sheboygan. And I went to see the dog, and he was obviously not a very well-bred dog. Mm -hmm. I did what I thought was the right thing and walked away, and after being contacted over and over again by friends and family members saying, you have to do something about that little dog, I went in one day and, and bought him, which I now realize was um, just creating another open, you know, a yeah. opening a cage for another dog. Absolutely. But I did buy him and I considered it a mercy purchase. Once I got him home and started finding out all the things that were wrong with him, got him to a vet. Um, the vet confirmed that there were many, many issues with this dog. They said, well, how can this be? This dog obviously came from a bad place, was sold at a bad place by people who didn't care. So I called uh, the Department of Agriculture, Trade and Consumer Protection and talked to Dr. Yvonne Belay, who mm -hmm. is our state vet, right. and said, I want to press charges. And she said, well, there is no law. There's been no law broken. There are no laws. And I said, well, what will it take? And she said, oh, about 10 years. Yeah. <laughs> and someone who will bite into it and not let go. Yeah. And um, yeah. I got started on it, and I just haven't been able to do anything but continue onward until right. we get a law that protects these animals and people who end up with them, including you at your shelter. We know, we know as a humane society that things have to be done. Changes have to be made. And I guess one of the things, one of the big reasons you're here today, obviously, is what are those changes? What are we trying to do? Are we trying to regulate puppy mills? Are we trying to eliminate puppy mills? Well, first let's, let's ask, what is a puppy mill? In the years that I've been doing this, I've come to one simple conclusion, and that is when I see one, I know one. Um, however, I am experienced in this, and so what we want to do is help the public understand how to know one when they see one. Right. And we have um, put out a brochure um, that gives uh, red flags and green lights for how to identify a quality breeder versus a puppy mill. Right. In a nutshell, 
A quality hobby breeder will require that you enter into a contract with them, buyer and seller, that if you ever can no longer take care of that puppy, mm -hmm. that the puppy goes back to the breeder. And there are other organizations that do the, that, and that would be Humane Societies, Humane Societies and Shelters. Breed Rescue Groups. Right. So there are three reputable sources to get dogs, quality hobby breeders, Humane Societies and Animal Shelters, right. and Breed Rescue Groups. Right. Anybody who is letting you drive in their yard and get out your $200 or your $500 or your $1,500 mm -hmm. in cash and drive away with a puppy is probably a puppy mill. Once you are out of the driveway, they don't want to hear from you again. The other thing that very much um, pegs a puppy mill is these animals will be in less than healthy condition. They will be underweight. They will be matted, not groomed. They will be smelly. Um, they may, you may observe things like improper kenneling, caging, too many animals in a cage, not enough food or water, not enough facility for exercise. Um, these are all now, red, red flags. Obviously, someone who, who goes to that particular uh, situation and, and sees those conditions, I mean, your heart's going to break. They're, of course. They're going to they're do exactly what you did you know, 10 years ago, and, and they're going to purchase a puppy or a dog because they feel sorry for it. What do you say to that? I'm begging people not to do that. I know. There's it's hard. The, I know. Our hearts take over our heads. But what you are doing when you purchase from someone like that is you are continuing to keep them in business. Yeah. You're putting food on the table. You're, That's, you're, 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 you're and absolutely you are, right. You are destining the adult breeder dogs that are left behind. The puppies are actually the lucky ones. Yeah. They get out. Right. You have to remember the adult breeding dogs that are left behind for years and years and years of abuse. And if we stop giving these people money, it will no longer be a, a profitable business. Right. And they will shut down. Right. Right. Now, let's talk about, name your website. Tell us your, what your website is. It's www.nowisconsin puppymills.org. Okay. And I want to tell the folks out there that are watching this program, you need to go to this website. This is a phenomenal website. You've done a beautiful job. Thank you. I can tell you, I did my research on this. There is everything that you need on this website. Your legislators are on there, what you can do, what, I mean, it is just an informative, extremely informative website as far as puppy mills. And, and I commend you on that because if you built that, I mean, that's a beautiful, beautiful Thank you. website. So, Thank you. We've been working on it. That website's been in development for eight years. And over time, you know, you really get to know what people want to it's, know about. It's a tremendous website. It's a great resource. And they're really, I mean, there is just, you know, anything that you want to know, you can go on that website. And it, it's really well done. So Thank my you. compliments to you. So let's talk about what, what, what do you, what are you trying to achieve? What is your goal here? Are you trying to eliminate all puppy mills? Are you trying to regulate puppy mills? Tell us what, what this project is doing. I wish that our mission could be to completely eliminate this industry, this business sector. I don't think that that's a practical goal and I do not think it's an achievable goal because it is an industry, it is a business and we don't want to lump every single person that's right. breeding dogs into this bad category. There are some extremely dedicated, high quality hobby breeders in Wisconsin, and they should not be uh, thought of as puppy mills right. or we should right. not be endeavoring to eliminate dog breeding as such. And I, and I do want to clarify that as well. We are not opposed to reputable breeding. Breeding is very, very important, um, you know, obviously to continue the temperament and, the, and the, the qualities and the characteristics of a breed. So that, that is very important. So we do want to make that point very clear. What we do object to is people who are doing this only for the money. 
these are the puppy millers. These are the people that we believe that through strict regulation, licensing, inspection, there are many of these folks do not want to be troubled with that. The reason that they're doing it now is it's an easy, sleazy, cheesy business. Right, absolutely. And once you set in place a regulatory environment, the worst of the worst will fall away simply because they will not be able to meet the standards, nor will they want to be bothered by it. Right. So in a way, regulation does eliminate and it brings up a higher standard in those who decide to continue. Well, and that's our goal. And